I am with Eric today. He's in store. I'm in my office. We're doing our responsible social distancing. Uh, and we wanted to give you some tips uh, from Eric's perspective on how we can help out with Red May. Uh, the first point that I want to talk to you, Eric, about is going to be about running every day. I know you have some experience with this in the past, and uh, you probably have some good advice, whether you're just starting out or whether you're a veteran runner. And I just wanted to uh, pick your brain on that a little bit. Right on. Okay. Uh, well, thanks for um, for setting this up, Steve, and for looking after um, runners before this and during this and after this strange time. You guys are doing a great job. So we're so happy that you guys asked us to be part of this. Pretty cool. Thank you for um, being part of it. Yeah. No, I really like it. Um, yeah. So well, maybe, I don't know if I should start with my own little, because it, uh, let me start before I talk about my own running every day um, kind of thing. Just, uh, I just want to touch on the idea that uh, um, being very aware of how your body is responding to whatever activity it is that you're doing. So in this case, we're talking about, about running. Um, but I like to start off by saying that your, our bodies, as humans, are designed to run. Um, and so what often happens is that we have a, things that kind of get in the way of letting our bodies do what they are naturally uh, meant to do. And that's just our modern life. It's just the way our lifestyles are. So we tend to sit too much probably and, and maybe eat things that maybe aren't very healthy for us. Uh, maybe we've neglected our strength and our mobility. And then we ask our body to run and things show up. Things uh, maybe sometimes really quickly. Um, you know, some pain and some discomfort. And there's can be a tendency to kind of blame the running. But probably a bit of a list of things that haven't been going you know maybe we just didn't even realize we've been kind of neglecting so um i just want to touch on that that we and that's what envision fitness is so good at making sure we're doing those things so we can do whatever activity that we want to do whether it's riding or running or, or anything else um so that's kind of i just kind of remind people of that and then maybe if people even already know that but if you get so used to doing what we regularly do um and doing this run every day in may things show up. Um, yeah, so that on that, uh, the other thing too, I wanted to, okay, so I just wanted to say that right up front. Um, but I guess you could even be doing all those things correctly and like really looking after your, uh, yourself and still have issues that show up when you're running. And that's okay and that's expected and we have, we have ways of looking after those. So which is what we're kind of going to talk about today. Right? Perfect. So, so I want so I'll tell you a little a little bit of my running every day, which you would have known about in a while. This happened a few times in my running uh, life, and typically it happens kind of um, organically or almost kind of sneaks up on me. So not really by accident, but I'm not really not deliberately. I guess that's a way to put it. I haven't deliberately run every day, but just the way my life and my business is. Sometimes I'll look back on my running um, over, uh, say, a month. And I'll realize, oh, I don't see a day where I didn't run. And so sometimes um, that's kind of exciting. I'm like, oh, uh, I didn't realize that because I'm, I don't have any issues. I don't have any concerns. I don't have to take a break, essentially. Although I am recovering and being mindful of my recovery, so it's allowed me to run every day. And so that, that kind of um, how many days I've run can sometimes be either be kind of, like I said before, kind of sneak up on me, like what could be, it could be well over 100 or you're getting close to 200 days and um, because they're not all the same. So then once the number starts getting high, um, you know, then I, like when I look back at it, it really changes. Each run day is very different. So, so a quick example is that I might coach for four days for, for my runs in a week, let's just take a week as an example. For my runs in a week, I'm running because I'm coaching. And then four or five of those runs I'm doing in a week is my own workouts. So I might run nine times a week, but they're not the same. So there, and there's, I, there's enough recovery in there where it, it's, uh, it's completely fine to keep going like that. So when you say they're not the same, like what does that mean? I mean, to most yeah. people, uh, running is running. They get outside, <laughs> they, they, they you know, move their feet, one foot in front of the other, and that's running. Uh, so what do you, what do you uh, mean when you say it's, it's not the same? Yeah, that's, that's true. And I do like to say that 
um, running is just is not walking. So as long as, as soon as both feet come off the ground and you're moving forward, now you're running. So, um, but obviously it could be a lot slower. It could be a lot like the duration changes, the surface changes, the intensity, the pace. Um, those things make it different and allow okay. you to, to keep running, which is what we're going to talk about. Like, that's what we're doing right now. We're running well, maybe more than we've ever run before. Um, but if you do it carefully and you do it with some forethought, then you can keep doing it. So I, I'm hoping that in June, people keep running. Right. Me too. I mean, I, I think the, the, the point of, of this is, you know, just to get people out and being active. And I'm seeing yeah. that more than ever right, right now that people need to do that. And this is just a way to get out there and be held accountable and do something consistently. And with, with the hope that you're able to be consistent throughout the month and then maintain that habit after, as we know, it takes 21 days to form a habit. Yeah. And so if you guys are doing this over the course of the month, you've built a new habit. And there is something you don't have to run every day after this, but you've got something um, that you can do anywhere, anytime. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so just let's just take that um, uh, an example we were talking about with how they're going to be different. So what, what's a good way to think about it might be uh, like when I'm coaching people who want to increase their mileage, which is kind of what we're, we're doing in this in a way. Uh, often it starts with slowing down. So um, if you slow down, you can probably do it more often. So if you want, and th this is where uh, the run or ride really helps too. So this is, uh, I like to say, if you're trying to alternate, like if you're going to run one day, you'd ride the next. Um, and if you're to, if let's just, that's a good way to do it. Run, ride, run, ride. You, you, you'd really give yourself a good chance to keep going. Um, but if you were just to run every day, um, how would that look? You have to really think about that. So, so for example, if you just did a little little test here, just think about this. If you were to run one day and then sprint the next day and then do your regular run the day after that and then sprint the day after that, you that wouldn't be sustainable for very long. Like you would go, okay, I'm not going to do that. Just You just know right away. But then if you thought, I'm going to run one day and I'm going I'm to walk the next and then run and then walk the next day and then run. Sure, you could do that. Um, but if you want to run every day, you could run the same pace of your regular run and add another run day. You might be able to do that for a while, but you'll probably run into some difficulties. You'll probably get either, whether it's fatigue or overuse issues. Um, so if you made that second day of running a lot slower, you're more likely to be able to keep going. And then I would even go a next step would be to make your regular run half of the first part of that regular run, the first half, I worded that terribly, the first half of your regular run, slow that down. Right. So if you can slow down, you can probably keep going. Yeah, I think a runner is especially uh, someone that's been running consistently for some time, someone like me, uh, gets caught into a trap thinking that I need to be running at a certain pace. That's kind of just my average comfortable yeah. pace. And uh, when you get in, and that's when I'm running, like say four to five times a week, but adding, you know, two to three days is a big change. Yeah. And uh, I definitely have to dial back some of my days and just be, be mindful of how far I'm running as well as the pace that I'm running. Otherwise I'm going to get burnt out really quick. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So finding that, and then that really, um, means you're going to have to be tuning into your body, really paying attention to the signals that your body's sending you. Um, so you're able to, to adjust uh, and adjust early, like not waiting too long to, oh, now I have a problem. Now I need to adjust. You need to be doing these things mindfully early. Yeah. Right. So being proactive rather than reactive, essentially. Yes. Yeah.